Good morning, fans. Privateer FX coming at you on the Monday after the Super Bowl. God bless Kansas City. They beat Philly. I like that guy, Jalen Hurts, stand up guy. Says what he means, means what he says. Uh, good guy, good value structure, seemingly. Uh, anyway. Congrats to Kansas City. Um, you see today, I'm opening up here uh, on a website called Kenwell.ch. I wouldn't say that Kenwell is sponsoring uh, Privateer today, but I will say that um, we run some money for one of the partners of this group. And I just want to give him a shout out and his firm a shout out. These guys are different than Privateer. These guys are investors. They're wealth managers, um, and I think they're one of the best, most gracious group of guys that you'll come across in the business. A couple things are in play here. The no asshole rule is in play, and the no douchebag rule is in play. So anyway, if you're looking for financial help, if you're looking for someone to give you an idea about a long-term portfolio to preserve your wealth or create your wealth, have a look at these guys. Uh, I obviously know uh, Patrick, who runs the Swiss business. Uh, he's sort of my main contact here. Uh, but please, don't be afraid to have a look at Ken Well. There's my little pitch for the day. Let's get to the charts. Um, Rates higher, dollar higher today, stocks lower. It resisted on Friday. I don't know why it was resisting so much. It's not like stocks are collapsing or anything. Uh, you can see on Friday in Europe, we were going the correct direction down to 40.62. Uh, but then late in the afternoon, you could just see the price action was just refusing. Here's the hourlies. It just went up all day, right? And it closed up. <clears throat> up near the highs at 4100 um kind of a gap open up to 4106 which looks like it was just getting stops and now back going in the right direction i think with rates going higher the problem with all of this is we've got cpi uh tomorrow so are we going to get a big um fu move today i don't think so uh we were long dollar yen just based on that close, right? So same dollar yen obviously was wildly hectic on Friday and it was untradeable. But then as we were closing up at 374 when rates were at 374 and dollar yen was resisting as well and it was late on Friday, you could just see people were hitting the bid just to go into the weekend square. This looked like an opportunity for us, so we, we paid. 42s um, and went into the weekend long dollar yen worked out pretty well uh, if, if you remember on Friday this at the open we were looking for this to break 131.90 so we paid 63s 131.63s going into Friday um, obviously we got stopped on that with the news the BOJ news um, we ended up hitting 15s, uh, which was fairly painful, right? The news kind of, you know, caught us a little flat-footed there. We didn't have downside stops in, which is unusual for us on that, but we did get caught. But if you remember the price action, it went 75 given, and it went back up to 20. Um, so it gave us a chance to um, get out of that. And then... You know, I wouldn't say we got lucky, but we kind of got lucky. We were fishing down um, at 130 the figure and got a few longs just kind of to pay for the shorts. And then once we were square dollar yen for the day, we just we put the guns down dollar yen on Friday. It was just, wow, that was, it was quite hysterical price action. But there's something you have to consider here, and this is also something to consider with the Fed. Um, if Japan starts getting hawkish, what's going to happen to their 
you know, to, to their economy, to how are they going to pay the interest on that debt? Their debt to GDP is over 200%. They are like a litmus test for fucked, right? Trapped. Um, so rates can go higher in Japan, but it's certainly not going to be the BOJ that's going to jack them higher. Maybe the market will, will refuse, um, you know, credit, Japanese credit and force rates higher, and this could happen also in the U.S. If, if Mr. Market goes, I'm worried about the U.S. paying their bills, they can force rates higher. But certainly the Fed is getting towards their limit here. They can't jack this shit to 6-7% with $31 trillion outstanding. So we're in this kind of weird uh, push and pull, right? We got CPI higher. We got, we got Powell, who is threatening to be hawkish um, and threatening to be Volcker. But we also have this elephant in the room, which is basically the U.S. credit card debt. Um, they just can't afford for rates to go much higher than they are now. So it'll be interesting. Um, how this resolves itself, I have a feeling there's going to be some sort of, um, and it might be the debt ceiling that triggers this, there's going to be some sort of questioning, there's some sort of moment of truth about G7 debt, and could be Italy, could be Japan, um, also could be the States, right? Uh, but anyway, that's push or pull push and pull on the medium and long term. We're not really concerned with that here. Um, we're concerned with making money on the day. Long dollar yen makes sense to us. Uh, we've harvested two-thirds of the position already, but we will be rebuying on any little moves down to 131.90. And we're not looking, again, for, for a bang-bang day in dollar yen. Uh, we're looking for a bullish, rangy day because all of the action is going to be tomorrow. Uh, no G7 releases today. We do have Swiss CPI, uh, which if you're a glutton for punishment and you want to trade Euro Swiss or Dollar Swiss, uh, that's going to move that shit. So be super careful with that. But anyway, long dollar again looks okay. You don't want to buy here, um, but any move down to 130, 190. You might want to clip some, uh, put it in the basket with the idea that you're just going to sell it 20, 30 points higher. Let's go to Swiss for all you gluttons out there and sociopaths. Um, crazy bar uh, last hour on Friday. Like, what was that? And it almost kind of looks like capitulation. And it had like a tiny little capitulation bar. So, But it's only 15 points. So 65 down to 50 closed at the absolute lows but now we've gapped open <clears throat> up to 63 um swiss cpi today are we going to close that gap down to 50 i don't know sometimes euro swiss just i mean not sometimes euro swiss just dances to its own little tune um if cpi comes in light uh, this will pop if it comes in heavy um, which would be odd for Switzerland. We don't really have um, we don't really have global macro inflationary pressures. We do have inflationary pressures because everyone in the world wants to live in Switzerland, so there's high demand for real estate and hotels and bars and restaurants. You know, tend to screw, um, especially foreigners when they come in and you know, can command super high prices. Um, so I'm not expecting a super heater here. Uh, it wouldn't be, wouldn't surprise me if this came in, they were expecting 0 0.5. This wouldn't surprise me if this came in way lower and the Swiss franc gets sold. Dollar Swiss, which is less of a psychopathic currency pair, but it's still pretty crazy or pretty silly or sometimes nonsensical. 92.90 is is the uh, big, big medium term number. Uh, this high is 92.88. This high is 92.90.6. This high is 92.89. Um, 
on a light one, there's going to be stops through this. There's actually going to be medium-term and long-term CTAs who are going to say, who have been super patient, um, are now going to say, here's a global macro trigger, here's a technical setup, uh, going into US CPI, which people think might be hot, um, just by the looks of US 10 years are, are at 373 right now. So there, there's money to be made at 92.90. Whether you want to get long uh, for the week, I don't know. Uh, I certainly am not going into CPI tomorrow with a pa with a packet of uh, packet of currencies on. I'm not going to be going in long uh, long tons of dollars. I'll be square going into CPI. But there's going to be some money to be made around 92.90. Elsewhere, we were short Aussie um, Friday. This is the one that paid the bills. Um, we said between 40 and 50. This uh, looks topish and, and turned out to be correct. It was a weird one heading into the fix or heading into the 4 o'clock hour. We traded back up to 47 after being down at 20. That was a bit unfortunate or I would say uncomfortable. But... It resolved itself lower, and you saw us on Twitter. There was good 2A, 15, between 69, really 17 and 20. We just squared it there. <clears throat> and, you know, that was 5 p.m. Time for a cold beer, uh, although we're off the beer right now, but uh, time for a hot tea. And this, I think, is a sell. Uh, back up into that 1520 area where you saw that congestion um, but we're going to keep it light right because the big the big number is coming out tomorrow today is just hit and run try and grab some cash to start the week uh, and give us some leverage to trade to put on bigger trades tomorrow <coughs> again s and p's here uh, this should stay offered all day, but it's not going to fall out of bed. Looks like you can sell this stuff um, up near 4100 And even if you're short here, you're going to get a chance to probably buy these back. Are we going to trade 40, 40 60 today? Probably. Are we going to put in a little short-term double bottom? Yeah, probably. And then we'll close back at 4090 and just jig and jam waiting for um, the big release tomorrow. Keep in mind also that there's PPI on Thursday. Um, and so a big week on inflationary indicators. They're revising how they, how they uh, report CPI, so this is going to create some confusion. And expect a very, very volatile day tomorrow. Elsewhere uh, on the currencies, we were waiting down at 88.05 in euro sterling. Did not get given. The low is 24. We don't mind buying low ones here um, in euro sterling. This obviously is not going to be affected as much by uh, U.S. numbers. So same strategy. We're going to try and buy low ones. Maybe if we sneak, we'll be watching this very closely if we get that back down below 8824. Speaking of the individual parts, uh, Euro dollar looks like she wants lower. We don't really feel super strongly about this. We'd much rather be short Aussie um, than Euro. It's like pea soup Euro, pretty thick um, and slow moving, but she does look like she wants lower. Cable's resisting. Cable usually is the you know, the scarecrow, um, the flimsy scarecrow this year. It is resisting. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. The 200-day, 119.45. Keep that in mind. It could be in play. Um, this will be at the mercy of CPI. And, and if CPI comes in hot, cable could be one of your horses. I think Aussie is a better horse also than Cable, but could be one of your horses here. Um, let's see. 
Elsewhere, there's not much else really to talk about. Uh, EuroCAD's getting a bit extended. We had a big day because of the uh, Canadian employment numbers that came out strong. Um, just from a mathematical perspective, we're going to be fishing for longs on this guy um, down near 140 to the figure, which is a ways away. I don't expect EuroCAD to make much moves. One last thing. Dollar China, which we have not been very good at trading this year so far, is now through these um, these key levels. We saw, you know, we saw the monsters at six seventy nine fifty um, for the first six weeks of the year. Now it's sort of been resolved to the top side. Yeah, there's all the balloon bullshit and there's all the little political drama in in China, but. Um, we're using this as just sort of evidence of the strength of dollar strength or dollar weakness. And with this thing resolving through 679.50, it just adds to the dollar is stronger story right now. Um, gold, same thing. Gold's just taking it in the ass. Uh, are we going to make a trade below 1850 probably not today but if we get a heater tomorrow and cpi gold is going to get whacked there are some there are a lot of gold owners which is just a classic hopers market right these people don't trade it they only look one way it's an incredibly dangerous way to invest and to trade there's never um there's never any nimble trading in gold. People are just blockheads and they're like, oh, gold's going up because the world's going to end. It'll be a dystopian future that's going to bring us all down. Yeah, of course, it probably is correct, but that will happen sometime between, you know, next week or 7,000 years from now. So uh, it doesn't really make much sense to trade with that mentality. Careful of gold uh, if we get a hot one tomorrow. But we got... We got no interest in gold today. Today we're just trading on the long side dollar yen. You know, we have some PL in the bucket already, so it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's uh, laissez faire, but it is a little bit laissez faire. Um, you know, as long as rates are above 370, we're happy to buy dollar yen. Any move back to 130, uh, might sell some, some Aussie up at 18 if we see that. Uh, it's only 5.44 a.m. right now, so a uh, good couple of hours before the London guys get sorted. They'll be tired. A lot of them watched the Super Bowl last night, and that means they were drunk at 4 a.m. Uh, so it'll be a groggy, slow start to the London Open today. No releases out there except for the Swiss, and I am going to shut up now. I will catch you guys tomorrow for CPI. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.